Right, good. Um, hello, everyone. Hopefully, uh, we're all right. We've had a bit of change of scene because um, I'm actually in the process of moving out uh, once this lockdown finishes, so things are getting a bit shifted around and put in the boxes, etc. etc. So, uh, good morning, um, whoever's out there watching. Um, you know, two minutes 11, so we won't start the the usual quiz until um yeah 11 o'clock right so um yeah if you want to say hello now's a good time to do that on the live chat so I can see who we've got and then otherwise we'll wait a couple of minutes and we'll start the uh we'll start the quiz so Morning, Kira. So I don't know why I'm typing this because I'm just putting it on the message. <laughs> I can just say hello, can I? Uh, morning, Harvey. Morning, Sky. Excellent. Good. Right. Okay. Um, here we go again. As I said to Sophie on the chat. Um, morning, Matthew. Good to see I've got my two moderators in. Brilliant, lads. When we get back into school and I'll see you. I'll make sure I, I sort you something because you've been brilliant for moderating these. That's excellent. Um, right. So um, let's let's go um, with this with today's lesson. So today's lesson is on radioactive decay and ionizing radiation. So before I tell you um, what we're doing about today, let's do today's quick quiz. Right. Um, so up here we've got a picture of a sodium atom. Now remember, what we've been doing so far in atomic structure is we've been looking at um, what an atom actually is in terms of its structure. Remember, it's made up of three particles, and there's the, a the diagram there of a sodium atom. And then we've been looking at things like the atomic number and the mass number to see what those can tell us. So the square on your screen, the sodium square, it has two numbers and that tells us about the atom. And this is just a quick quiz to see if we can remember what those things meant and what they told you. Um, in the second lesson that we did, we've done um, Rutherford's uh, alpha particle scattering experiment. And again, you need to know details of that. So there's going to be four questions on that as well. So your first question. In this sodium atom, we can see there's a nucleus, that central part. Um, what are the names of the two particles in that uh, nucleus? So the two particles that are found in the nucleus of an atom. Shouldn't take you long. So these can be just jotted down anywhere. All right. Good. Okay. Um, question two. Um, there's a symbol next to a sodium atom at the top. So the top, the Na, the sodium uh, atom, and the, the picture is of a sodium atom as well. Um, you've got two numbers. You've got 23 and you've got 11. So um, which one of those is the atomic number? So what's the atomic number of sodium? Is it 23 or is it 11? And what does that tell you about the structure of the sodium atom? So what's the atomic number? Is it the 23 or the 11? And what's the structure of... Um, what does that tell you about the structure? Uh, thank you. Now I've just got I'm at mix, I've just got my cup of tea. Good. Hang on back to the PowerPoint. Right. So question three. In this sodium atom, without trying to look really closely at your phone screen and count them, how many neutrons are in a sodium atom? So the numbers on the on the on the square they don't tell you directly, but you can work it out. That's a bit of a clue. So how many neutrons are in a sodium atom? If you're stuck, you can try and count, count them, but if you're on your phone, it'd be tricky. Uh, right, good. Question number four. Okay, I've on 
on here I've drawn one isotope of sodium, but you can get different isotopes of sodium. And we learned about this. This is really important for the stuff we're going to do now in today's lesson. So can you remember what an isotope is? All right. That's, I've shown you and drawn you one version of sodium. You can get different versions of sodiums, which are the different isotopes. But what is a, an isotope? What's different about them? What's the same about them? Okay. So there's your first four questions. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Very good. All right. So these next questions about are about Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment and how we develop the model of the nucleus, because the 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 drawing that's on your screen at the minute of, of the sodium atom, we didn't always think that atoms were like that. We didn't know that. We only really found out that model um, after Rutherford did his famous experiment, which he taught, which we talked about last Thursday. So hopefully you can remember some details. So um, question. Here we are, here's a bit of a help. So here's some images to help you with this. Um, what is the name given to Thompson's model of the atom? So you can see a picture there, hopefully, that's got uh, Thompson's model, um, sort of like a blue ball with um, a blue positive ball with some gray dots in it. Can you remember the name of that atom, uh, name of that model, sorry? We need to try and remember what the model, that model was. Okay, so that's question five. Question six, how is Rutherford's model of the atom different to Thompson's? So on your screen, you should have two pictures of atoms, the Thompson one and the Rutherford one. And the Thompson one le led to the Rutherford one, but they're very different. OK, so can you just explain how the, how the Rutherford one is different from the Thompson one? The clue is that little red circular one, circular section in the centre of the Rutherford one. What does that represent? Because that's the thing that the Thompson one didn't have. All right, so that's your little clue. Okay, so jot down your answers. What's the difference between Rutherford's model and Thompson's model? Okay. Right, question seven. Right. Tricky, these quick quiz questions this time. Um, just a reminder, if you can't remember this stuff, that's fine, but you need to go back to those knowledge organisers. You know the grey box that's the start of every sheet that I send? Like, if you look at, at last Tuesday's sheet, the one about the developing model of the atom, all of the info that you need to learn is in there, and if you learn that info, so you can do, you can cover it up and test yourself or give it to someone else to ask you and, and test you back, but if you learn that key knowledge, you'd be able to answer these questions. So... What evidence, and when I say that, what did he see? What When he did this alpha scattering practical, so if you look, he's firing these alpha particles at the thin gold foil, and they're, they're, they're deflecting and being detected on the on the fluorescent screen. So what was it he saw that led him to coming up with that model that you can see with the red dot in the middle, all right, and the, and the minus is going around the outside? What did he see? What was the evidence? Okay. And finally, uh, why was the gold foil Rutherford used thin? So probably a bit of a higher question this, but why why couldn't he just have a big lump of gold in the middle? And it's not to do with cost this, it's not to do with it being expensive. He had he had loads of money, he could have had a big bit of gold if he wanted. Why did he make the gold foil really thin? Tricky one that, but there we go. Some questions, as I've said, are harder than others, that's life in it. Okay. Uh Right, so um, there are your questions, folks. Um, I'll give you a, yeah, a little bit of time. I'll sip your tea. It's better this having your brew. Uh, and then we'll go through some answers. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, go and crack on. Um, there's your PowerPoint back. Hopefully, I've not said hopefully everyone's doing all right and surviving the lockdown still and be interested to see what the Prime Minister says on Sunday about how things might change and whether he indicates anything about schools because obviously that's still up in the air at the minute. 
Um, so yeah, we'll just wait and see for uh, for Monday. What whatever happens, it appears that when we do get back to school, we're going to have to try and stay two meters apart for a bit until we can get a vaccine. Um, which is so that would be very very difficult with a full school. So I'm not saying it's not going to be a full school, but I. I'm just saying it, it might be that we have to do things a bit differently to make sure we can keep two metres apart because with 30 kids in the classroom, it's hard to stay two metres apart, isn't it? So, yeah, things will be a little bit different, but don't worry. Hey, it's fine. We can always do our YouTube live lessons. Right, answers. So, here we go. Particles in the nucleus, so hopefully you've got that. Protons and neutrons. Um, atomic number of sodium is the bottom number it's the small number the number 11 and it tells you how many protons are in the sodium's nucleus and that's also the same as the number of electrons so mark these off as we go along so how many how many neutrons all right well we need to use the mass number at the top which is 23 and that tells you there's 23 in total in the nucleus if 11 are protons then we know 12 must be neutrons okay a bit of maths good and then what's an isotope well it's a different version of the same element. So in sodium's case, it would be a sodium that had 11 protons, but maybe 13 neutrons or 11 neutrons. So it's got the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Good. Right. Thomson's model is called the plum pudding because the electrons, those grey things. Now, I don't like the picture a bit because it looks like they're positive. They're not. The electrons are negative. And that the overall purple thing is the positive sphere of charge in the plum pudding. Okay. Um, now, how's Rutherford's model different? Rutherford's model was mainly empty space. Okay, so so Thompson's plum pudding, remember, was this positive ball of charge with negative electrons dotted in it. All right. Um, Rutherford's found out that it was mainly empty space. And it just had a small nucleus in the middle and it was like a really heavy nucleus, had a lot of mass and it was positive and the electrons were going around the outside. So that was the main difference. It shifted from like a positive sphere of charge to basically empty space with a little nucleus and electrons around the outside. All right. Now, what led him to that? When he did his experiment, when he did... When he fired those alpha particles, if you look at the, 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 the diagram of the practical at the top, when he fired those alpha particles, mar by far the commonest result was they went straight through. Okay, So most of the alpha particles went straight through. So it's mainly empty space. And just a few were deflected or rebounded. And that's those were the ones that were interacting with the nucleus. Okay, Just a few were like in, uh, uh, colliding with the nucleus and coming right back. So that was his sort of his evidence that let him to change it and why was the gold foil thin because if you just fire alpha particles at a lump of gold they'll just all get absorbed by the gold because there'll be like millions and millions and millions of atoms lined up and the alpha particle can't get through any of them because statistically it's bound to hit a nucleus sooner or later isn't it if it's got to go through a million or 10 million or whatever so he needed it really thin so he could he was looking at sort of one or two atoms thick he couldn't get it an atom thick but he used gold not because he was like blinged out and he wanted to show off but because he could he had a technique to make it very thin gold foil is just a very thin leaf of gold and he what he needed to be firing these alpha particles at just one or two atoms so he could actually see what was happening with one or two not just getting them blocked by a millions and millions all right, so those are your answers to your quick quiz. Okay, uh, good. So, um, I'll have a quick look at the post your scores on uh, the chat now, and I'll have a quick look. All right, see how you got on. Um, so, have a look. I've changed how I've done it a bit. So now, hopefully, you can see my browser, and so you can see what um, what I'm looking at. So you'll be able to see that I'm looking at the live chat. So um, yeah, I've, uh, stick stick your scores on. That'd be ace. And see how you go on. Right, brill. Well done, folks. Good stuff. Well done, Jenny. Well done. Right, hey, so um, 
which bits did you struggle with, Sophie? Was it the, the, the first four questions or the last four questions? The other thing is, if you don't want to put it on this chat, well done Finian, well done Sky, um, well done Matthew, well done Kobe, um, really good stuff, this guy's. Stick it on an email, Sophie. The, the the thing is, is if you're if you're thinking right, I get that, but I don't get like what Sir was talking about when he was discussing question seven or whatever it might be. Um, what you what you need to do is you need to um, email me, and I can get back to your specific sort of. I can help you specific, like you know, like as if you put your hand up in class, and I'd come round and help you, Sophie. Wanna so email me with the stuff that you're struggling with, yeah? Okay. Good. All right. Uh, Jake, well done. Well done. Cole, we're getting there. Brilliant. Okay. Good um, Good stuff. Kobe just banned Sire, whatever his name is. Just get rid of him. Uh, Boot him out. That'd be ace. Uh, or Matthew, if you get there first, you can kick him out. That's good. Just block him. Um, right. Okay. Good. So, um, excellent. Let's... Uh, Let's crack on then with what we're doing today. So we need our PowerPoint back. Um, I'm impressed, folks. So by those, those weren't those, those weren't easy questions. Um, good. So, right, these are our objectives for today. Today it gets a bit more interesting because what we've done previously about the structure of the atom and and how we've developed the model of the atom is it crosses over the chemistry and it's absolutely like the the solid foundations of it. If you were going to learn some key knowledge, it would be the key knowledge off those first two knowledge organizer sheets that I give you, because they really underpin a ton of your chemistry and a ton of your physics. Okay, this stuff now we're going on to like look at actually radioactivity and um, nuclear radiation. You know the stuff like in The Simpsons where you see Homer with that green glowing bar. All right, of now in reality, I'll say well that's not great having it green and glowing because. Stuff that's radioactive doesn't glow green. But anyway, we're talking about the dangerous stuff and 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 the stuff that can uh, that needs to be buried underground if it's made in a nuclear power station. So we're getting onto something that you might find a little, hopefully, a little bit more interesting. So we need to know what radioactive decay is, and we need to describe the properties of nuclear radiation. Now to help us, um, or or to to describe how we're going to do this. Um, we've got our document now. Obviously, all of the key information there is there, ready for you. And again, it's split into two halves, so you can cover this half up, half up let's say, and you can say, okay, radioactive decay, this is what it needs to be. You need to learn those definitions. I've got these on Quizlet, you see. So I'll send you some links to the Quizlets that you can then go and use to revise and learn, if you learn well that way. If you don't learn well through Quizlet, then find some other way of getting the stuff in the knowledge organisers in your head. And it, it's got to get into your long-term memory. And to do that, you need to repeatedly look at it and do something with the information, either tell it to someone else, write it down in a, on a vision card. That's why the Quizlets are good for changing around. Anyway, this is the key stuff for today's lesson. But the way I'm going to explain radioactivity is looking at... Um, as we're going to we're going to fill in this this sort of um, overview sheet together, which explains it nicely. And I'm going to try and use. Um, so if you haven't got this printed out, it's fine. You can just make your own notes on lined paper, or you can put it straight into a document. Or you, if you've got this printed out, and I was late putting it online last night, you can you can put it in. So I'm going to try and use a new um, facility. On my live feeds, which is like a whiteboard, so we'll see in a minute. It might all go wrong, but we'll see. We'll, we'll so you should be uh, looking at that. So, um, what we need to know is what radioactivity actually is. All right, and we're going to start with um, a problem that some atoms have got because, again, this is like the key to it all. Pe people, there's certain keys to your understanding in science, and if if you and certain topics in science, and, and this is the key. So let's start with the problem. Okay. So this is the problem, all right? And this is why we've been learning about isotopes as well. Some atoms are unstable, okay? Now, um, the vast, vast majority of atoms in the, in the universe are stable. And when I say stable, I mean their nucleus 
okay? He's happy sitting there uh, and will sit there the same forever and ever and ever, okay? Um, but some atoms are unstable. Their nucleus, so those protons and neutrons in the nucleus, they, they don't sit together well. They, 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 they've got too much energy. They jiggle about. They are not stable, okay? And this is because there's, there's a different number of, of neutrons and um, and protons there, aren't they, depending on the, the different atoms. So if we look at these three um, isotopes of carbon, so these are all carbon because they've all got six protons, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. So carbon-12 has got six neutrons, carbon-13 has got seven, and carbon-14 has got eight neutrons. Now the carbon that's got six protons and eight neutrons, so the, the carbon-14, that is unstable. That nucleus doesn't sit stably and it, it 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 needs to get stable it wants to become stable and, and it's these atoms that have got unstable nucleuses that are radioactive so when homer's got his green glowing thing that's just a bar made up of atoms that have got unstable nucleuses and they want to get stable they're sat there and they spend their time trying to become stable so not most things aren't radioactive because their nucleus is stable okay this is the key thing to understand all right this is not about the electrons going around the outside this is the nucleus the protons and the neutrons but some atoms have unstable nucleuses like the isotope of carbon carbon 14 and they are radioactive that's a radioactive source and they spend their time trying to become stable okay so what we're going to do now is I'm going to try, if I can, to show you something else. Now, because it's the first time I've done this, what it might go horribly wrong, but um, we're going to make some notes on the sheet now, or make some notes, and we're going to try and do it together about the problem. So in on the sheet, um, which hopefully you're looking at now, Okay. You have this first box here that I've highlighted, which is about the problem. And we're going to put some notes into this box now together. And I'm going to try and show you my whiteboard. Okay, so um, let's see if this works. And I'll check on me. I'll check on me encoder that this is working for now. Um, so I'm up, hopefully now. Let's have a look. You can see my whiteboard. Good. Um, I'll leave it on this screen actually. Now most of you, this is it's most of you know my handwriting isn't great at the best of times. This is desperately difficult to to, to write on for me anyway. Um, but we have the problem. The problem these atoms are um, they have an unstable nucleus. So in this box, in the problems box on your sheet, on your worksheet. So I might not have highlighted it yet, but. Um, in the, in the problems box there, there the top box, um, I want you to put these notes, we'll do these notes together. And then I'm going to check on the chat that this is working. Okay, let's go. So, um, let's draw uh, a radioactive source. So this is a radioactive source. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, and let's draw in the nucleus here. And let's draw some electrons going on the outside. Don't worry so much about it. So there's my atom. And I just want you to put some little wiggle lines on the nucleus to show and label this as unstable. Parts of my screen won't write on. Unstable nucleus. Okay, so this is the problem. Some atoms have unstable nucleuses. Okay. Um, and they want to. The problem is I can't put my hand on my laptop, on my iPad, sorry, because it. 
they want to be to get stable okay so this is this is basically where nuclear radiation comes from d dangerous radiation radiation that can cause cancer it comes from atoms that have an unstable nucleus most have stable nucleuses but some have got an unstable middle bit all right and they want to get stable and so we need to look at the solutions now for these atoms that want to get stable so if i put us back well firstly i'm going to check on the chat that you can see what i've just written on my screen um right so if possible uh can you just put a thumbs up on the chat if you've been able to see um, what I've been writing on um, on my iPad? Because I was trying to get it so I could make some notes that you could see. So just give it, um, yeah, give it a thumbs up if if that's okay. Because obviously I don't want to keep using this if it's not working. So I do, sound wise I'm just talk I'm just talking normally um so yeah I don't uh, you'll just have to sort your sound at your at your end right brilliant good yes so we can see this right happy days so, hey brilliant Mel good to see you right so we can teach an old dog, dog new tricks because I can now use my iPad to write on a blooming whiteboard that you can see to put notes onto your work so we're getting close to actually what it's like in a classroom apart from my writing's even worse so i'm gonna to have to try and keep it really really neat well or minimal and neat okay great well done folks let's go uh, let's get back into our powerpoint um okay so we have some atoms with an unstable nucleus and what they need to do and th this is this is where um this is what radioactive decay is it's it's the atoms have got unstable nucleuses okay giving off some radiation some nuclear radiation to try and become stable okay so the solution for these atoms that are, have got the nucleus that's unstable is to give off an alpha a beta or a gamma now you might have heard of those uh, you might have heard of gamma because apparently that's what turned the hulk into the hulk um some of you might have come across alpha beta gamma just because you've you've been alive how many years and you've had your ears open but this is what they do unstable nucleuses will give off alpha beta and gamma and when they give off alpha beta or gamma that's called radioactive decay so that's when your radioactive source those atoms that have got unstable nucleuses one of those nucleuses gives off an alpha beta or gamma that's called radioactive decay and the stuff that they give off to become stable out of their nucleus remember it's not to do with the electrons around the outside out of their nucleus that's the nuclear radiation that's the stuff that can can cause us serious issues serious issues as we'll find out but that's the process of radioactivity it's unstable atoms giving off alpha beta or gamma to try and get their nucleus to become stable okay so what I think um, I would like you to do, okay, is and there's there's a couple of things that we need to know about this process. So this is a random process, all right. So say you had a, a sample of a hundred million atoms that had unstable nucleuses, yeah. You can't tell exactly when one of the nucleuses is gonna to give off an alpha, beta, or a gamma. It, it's um it atom it happens randomly okay you can average it out for how long you'd have to wait but each nucleus it happens as a, a random it's a random process and the other thing is you can't just put it in a fiery furnace and heat it up to stop it being radioactive if those nucleuses are unstable yeah the only way they can get stable is giving out an alpha beta or gamma you can't burn them or add acid on them so that it, this radioactivity this radioactive decay this this giving out alpha beta or gamma to become stable um you can't change it with chemistry or heat 
and and you can't predict when a nucleus is going to decay it's a random process you can average data but it's a random process okay so in um in our document okay we have this solution we're going to look at alpha beta gamma in, in more detail but we have this solution and we're going to put some notes into this solution in in fact what um so the, and and these are going to be the notes that you're going to put in your solution um right so um, turn my pen on that Right, so um, if we go with, so these are notes that we put in the solution. If, if, we, if we draw, it's a bit better, so if we draw our unstable nucleus again, and we'll put some electrons on the outside, I'm not paying much attention to numbers because it doesn't really matter. It's the principles that we need to know here. Now, this is our unstable nucleus again, okay? And it's got three options. It can give off to get stable alpha. It could give off beta. Or it can give off gamma. Now, there's a third thing it can give off, which is a neutron. but And it is in the specification that you need to know that it might give off a neutron to become stable. But every all the questions, I don't think I've ever seen a question about a neutron being given off from a nucleus. It'd be right in the back end of a higher paper. So I'm going to touch on it, which I just have. But we need to concentrate on alpha, beta, and gamma. And let's make sure we know this is a random process. Sometimes I need to get used to this pen. It's a random process, and it's... Uh, unaffected by heat or chemical reactions. So you can't change it. Okay. So, right. Hopefully you're with me so far. So we've got this idea that most atoms in the world are happy as Larry. They're stable. They sit there doing nothing apart from doing a bit of chemistry if you if you want to do some chemistry with them. But they are they don't change off their own accord. Some atoms don't have a stable nucleus. They're, they're unstable and they spend their time. They're a radioactive source because they spend their time trying to become stable by giving off alpha, beta, or gamma. So that's where we're at. That's what radioactive decay is. It's when a, a, an atom the nucleus of an atom emits an alpha, beta, or gamma to try and become stable, okay? And the alpha and the beta and the gamma, that's what nuclear radiation is, and that's what the danger signs go up about because alpha, beta, and gamma aren't great for us, as we all understand. But first, we need to learn a bit more about the alpha, beta, and gamma. So, you've got three boxes on your sheet. Um, there they are, look, alpha, beta, gamma. Um as we go through the PowerPoint, can you add the notes, the properties of each, into those three boxes, please? Okay. Um, okay, so alpha particles. Some um, atoms will give out an alpha particle from their nucleus to become stable. Now, this is straightforward. It's two neutrons and two protons. So it just kicks out two protons and two neutrons okay so that's what an alpha particle is that's what rutherford rutherford has been firing these bad boys at a gold foil that's what he's been firing at a gold foil he's been firing little particles that are made up of two protons and two neutrons it's like a little chunk of a nucleus yeah or it's like a helium nucleus because that that is what a helium nucleus looks like so an alpha particle remember Two protons, two neutrons. And there are the four bullet points you need to get down. So can we have a rough picture of the alpha particle? Two pluses, two neutrons. And then those four bullet points in that box, please. So 
super important you you remember these facts about the different particles that can be emitted by radioactive sources. Now, because it's two protons, two neutrons, it's plus two charge, because remember those protons are positive, the neutrons are neutral, so they don't add to the charge, and it's got four, a mass of four, because there's four little particles there. Yeah? Now, most ionising, we'll come to that in a minute, um, that actually makes it the most dangerous to us under certain circumstances, because ionisation is not good for human cells or living tissue, basically. Um, and we'll, we need to do a lot more about that, because uh, that can lead, it can lead to cancer, you see. That's the problem. So ionising isn't great, and alpha is very ionising. We're going to look at what ionisation is in a minute, okay? But... Good news, because it's it's the most ionising, but it's the least penetrating. Now, that means what can it get through, okay? So alpha can't even get through 10 centimetres of air. It's really um, bad at getting through stuff. It's a, Because it interacts with things, it, it's absorbed by 10 centimetres of air, or your skin stops it getting into your body, so that's good, or paper will block it. Yeah, 10 centimetres of air, a little bit of paper, and the alpha gets blocked, Okay. Right, next one. A beta particle, so some nucleuses, if they're unstable, they'll give off a beta particle. Now, this is a bit confusing because a beta particle is an electron. And you're thinking, hang on, there isn't any electrons in the nucleus of an atom. I know there isn't any electrons in the nucleus of an atom, but this, elect this beta particle, this electron still comes out of the nucleus. It's not one of the ones on the shells. If an atom is unstable, the nucleus is unstable, an electron will come out of the nucleus. Some clever stuff's going on, but we'll cover that in another lesson. Okay, so beta particles are electrons. They're tiny, remember, we've looked at these properties. Um, it's got a minus one charge. It's a little bit ionising, which is, we're going to learn about in a minute. And it can, it can penetrate more than alpha, so it can get through your skin but it's stopped by aluminium um, or like a metre or so of air will stop it as well. So these are the facts you need to know, by the way. You need to know what stops beta. You need to know what stops alpha. You need to know what stops gamma. Um, you need to know which is most ionising, etc., etc. Um, but don't worry, I've got some questions for you in a, in a minute. Right, so that's beta. So we've got alphas, Two protons, two neutrons. Beta is an electron. And gamma, which is the other option for a nucleus to become stable, to give off, is actually a wave. All right? It's an electromagnetic wave. Now, ignore the electromagnetic bit for a minute because we actually study electromagnetic waves in year 11. Have I just made that up? No, I've not just made that up. We study those in year 11. And um, so... Have I put you back on the power? I hope I've put you back on the power. I'm just going to check you back on the PowerPoint. No, you're not back on the PowerPoint, are you? This is a problem when you're trying to do a million things at once, or it feels like. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to think when you came off the PowerPoint. We'll, we'll find out. Right. I think it was when I said electrons. I shifted it, you know, when I said electrons. Right, so that's the stuff about beta particles to get down. All of, Don't worry, all, all of this information is in your knowledge organiser, so you can pull it through from your knowledge organiser if I've just mucked up me in code, but hey-ho. Right, and gamma is an electromagnetic wave, so it's not actually a particle that comes out of the nucleus if it gives out gamma radiation. So if you've got the unstable nucleus and it, it tries to become stable by giving out a gamma ray. That's actually a wave. It hasn't got any mass, hasn't got any charge. It's not very ionising. It's the least ionising, but it goes through the most stuff. Okay, so it, you, you need lead to try and stop gamma. It'll go through paper, it'll go through air, it'll go through aluminium. You need some lead to stop it. Okay. So, um, hopefully you've got those notes down on alpha, beta and gamma um, because that's that's the solution for atoms that have got an unstable nucleus. They give out either alpha, beta or gamma. Okay, Sometimes a mixture of both but let's simplify it. Alpha, beta or gamma. Um, and we need to know their properties and those are ionising. So we have an issue. So if we, if we look at our document Ok 
Okay. Uh, which is here. We have an issue. Okay. Because this these alpha, beta and gammas are ionizing. And that's what is dangerous to us. So in this final box, we need to put down some information about what ionization is. And what, what it means to be ionizing. Okay. So... The issue, all right. I think I was sent off the trip, that's fine. Um, just because I got lost a minute ago. No, we're in the right place. Good. What's up with this? Just, yeah, cancel that. I don't want to print that. Sorry, folks. This is uh, when this is when normally in, in lesson I'm like, just bear with me a minute. I just need to get this sorted on the board. And you all start chatting about what went on at the weekend. Right. Um, good. So, this is the problem. Quick, Super quick recap. Atom with an unstable nucleus, radioactive source. To, it wants to get stable, so it gives that alpha, beta, or gamma to become stable, which we've just learned what they are. Alpha's two protons, two neutrons. Beta is an electron. Gamma is a wave. But there is an issue with this. This nuclear radiation is ionizing. Now we need to understand what that means. So ionization, look at the uh, image on the right. So this is where you've got some energy arriving. So there's a red arrow and a red wave arriving at one of the electrons in a different atom. So, so you've got a, the atom we're looking at now is a stable atom. It, it's, this is not a radioactive source, okay? So now we're just looking at a standard atom that alpha, beta and gamma that have been shot out the nucleus of an unstable atom yeah, are arriving at this stable atom. And they've got enough energy to actually knock an electron off the outer shell of that stable atom that the alpha, beta, gamma meet. Okay, So there's an example on your screen of sodium. If, if sodium loses an electron... Okay, so there's sodium in the first place with 11 protons and 11 electrons. If it loses an electron, so let's say an alpha comes along and it wallops that electron and knocks it off the atom, okay, that sodium then becomes what is known as an ion. It's been ionized because now you've lost a little minus. Overall, you become positive. You become a positive ion. You've lost one of your electrons so you've got one more positive proton than negative electron so you are you become positive so what the alpha and beta and gamma do is they can knock electrons off atoms that they come across after they've been given off from the radioactive source so that's that is what ionization is it's electrons being knocked off atoms okay turning them into ions, positive ions. It changes from an atom, loses its electron, it becomes a positive ion. Now, that's ionization. And if it happens in atoms in molecules in your DNA at the wrong time, it can cause cancer. We're going to come on to that, but that's why there's all this issue with alpha, beta, and gamma and nuclear radiation. That's why in Chernobyl, if you go to Chernobyl, okay, nuclear reactors, nuclear reactors are are brilliant at producing radioactive sources. So in the process of generating electricity in a nuclear power station, which we'll look at in the future, you end up with lots of atoms with unstable nucleuses. Okay, so they're giving off alpha, beta, or gamma to get stable. Okay, so when Chernobyl happened and it flew all this stuff into the atmosphere, you've got all this stuff giving off alpha, beta, and gamma. So the problem with going to Chernobyl is your atoms would be hit by loads of alpha, beta, and gamma, and they would be ionized, the atom. And if, that, if those atoms are in your DNA, and their electrons are knocked off by alpha, beta, or gamma, that can cause cancer. That's why you, you if you went to Chernobyl, you would get all deformities, and because your cells would be altered and damaged by this these alpha, beta, and gamma rays. So that's, that's the problem with this stuff. It's not very nice. Okay. Um... Right, what I'm going to do 
geese because we've done half an hour of quite intense learning there so i'm going to put i'm going to put the chat on and i'm going to take any questions you should have got a set of notes about the problem so someone some nucleus is being unstable uh, the solution, this idea that they give off alpha, beta and gamma to become stable from the nucleus, what those three things are, and then the problem, this problem of ionisation, okay? Because those are the fundamentals of radioactive decay, the process of giving out alpha, beta and gamma, and ionising radiation, the stuff that we've just talked about, alpha, beta, gamma, okay? I'm going to go... Um, I'm aware I've done a lot of teaching there in a block. I'm going to go to the chat and answer any questions for about three or four minutes. So now's the time. Right, good. Yes, absolutely. Of course I can, Kira. Okay, so th that's exactly the interaction that I was after because this helps. So let's go to the PowerPoint. Um, there you are. So there you go, Kira. Great, brilliant. So it, in the issue, Sophie, it's about the ionisation. So a great question. What what I, what I would do? Um, is I would, I've put the picture of the beta up for Kira, which I'll keep on for a little second. Um, so what I will, what I'll do is when Kira gives me a, a nod on the chat that she's got that sorted, we ne you need to put the stuff about ionisation. So, so a picture, or I, I mean, I can do some notes for the issues box on my iPad that I think would be good to put down. That's that's the other option, so we, cause we you can see notes now. Um, so yeah, just just let me know. I'm hoping now you've you've had a fair bit of time to look at the beta thing. So I'm going to switch to the iPad view to put some notes in the issues box. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll do that now. Um, So hopefully. Good. Um, so Sophie was asking uh, what issues, what notes you need to put in the issues. So um, this is our issues box. So what what you need in a, in a nutshell. Great question, Kieran. So, the atom, the easiest way to explain that is after I've done these issue notes for Sophie, because I'm always bad at this. I'll do them and then I'll answer your question. Um, so I'm going to keep I'm going to keep this picture simple, right? So the main issue is I is is ionization okay so here we have a stable atom okay so this is a stable atom this is just a normal atom okay and if you have alpha an alpha particle or a, or a beta which you so this is our alpha particle so Okay, this is our beta particle, which is an electron, and this is our gamma, which is a wave. They can, basically, they've got enough energy to get the electron and knock it off the atom. Okay, so, um, uh, so, if we call it radiation, so that's alpha, beta, and gamma, can knock electrons 
of atoms uh, and this is what is ionization okay so that's that's your your ionization so those are your, that's your issue Sophie is the fact that this alpha beta and gamma these particles are ionizing they can knock electrons off atoms like I'm showing on my diagram and and if those atoms are in the DNA of a living creature or a, an organism then it can lead those the cells in those organisms to divide uncontrollably which causes cancer now um, so those are the notes for the issue section now um, Kieran's question is a great question about atoms becoming unstable. If you've noticed in a nucleus, you've got protons that are positive, haven't you? And probably, hopefully from your science education so far, you know that positives repel each other. So like charges, a bit like two north poles of a magnet will push apart, two positive charges will push apart. So um, really all nucleuses should be unstable shouldn't they because they, they've got no minuses in them because the, the 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 neutrons are neutral um so there's no minuses in them keeping it together so why do these protons stay together in a nucleus and it's because there's another force that you'd learn about at a level called the strong nuclear force which is always attractive between all the protons and neutrons so the protons are held together with all the neutrons by this strong nuclear force and that balances out the positive charge of the protons pushing apart you with me so far <laughs> so some atoms those forces are balanced the strong nuclear force keeping the nucleus together is balanced by the positive repulsion of the protons pushing apart so it's stable but if you change the number of neutrons and protons to be slightly different then those ba those forces can become unbalanced and that's when it's unstable you know that Kieran great question okay um right we, we've only got 10 minutes left so and uh, so I, I want to um quickly talk to you about um some homework uh, not that all work is not homework but it feels like we've got our lessons and we can do some work afterwards fun 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 um so if we go back into our PowerPoint task to do before next week's lesson right there are some exam questions at the bottom of the the sheet that I've sent you and these are to do with the fundamentals that we've gone through today to check your understanding and to check your um, knowledge is there of ionizing radiation and radioactive decay Instead of doing a quick quiz next lesson, at the start of next lesson on Thursday, I'll go through these answers quickly. So what I need you to do um, before next week is to do these questions, and then we'll start next week's lesson with a green pen in our hand, and I'll run through the answers, and you can quickly mark these. I think it's out of 18. I can't remember. Um, let's have a look. Yes, out of 18 marks. So, um, yeah, they, these shouldn't take you too long. I'm purposely, you know, not making it over over difficult or over, over you know, too much a, a large amount. So have a go at these questions before next Thursday. Email me with any problems. You know, I don't understand question 3A, sir. What, you know, I'm here to help you out with this learning even when we're not in in school so yeah anything from today's lesson that you're not getting your head around send me an email anything that you want clarifying send me an email any questions when you try them that you don't get your head around send me an email and i can try and help you out okay so um get those done um yeah get those done um, for next Thursday and like I said instead of the quick quiz we'll go through those answers 
Um, do me a favour. Anyone who from year 10 especially, year, year 11 this is just supposed to be because all of a sudden you've had the rug pulled from under your education and so I want you to feel like you're still involved. It's great that some of you are on and doing this stuff. It won't have an impact either way on the grades that you receive. That's something separate. It's just something for you to do if you're interested, if you're bored, or if I was saying this to Kevin on email the other day, or if you're going to do something with science later on. Year 10, it's vital that you try and get this stuff done. So it's brilliant that you lot are here. Can you send as many people in year 10 that you have social contact with the message that there is some work to do uh, that will be then gone through in next Thursday's live lesson at 11, okay? Because it's it's really important that way. Right, um, I'm going to uh, finish up early. Um, if anyone's got any questions desperately ask now, put it in the chat because I'll check the, I'll check the chat um, briefly. Um, so I'll stop the live stream. I'll keep having a, a, a look at the chat for another minute or two. But um, that's it. Well done. Lesson three done. Um, stay safe, everyone. Um, it is still sort of feels like bizarre times. I'd much rather be in school teaching you a lot than trying to mix some up on YouTube. But um, there we go. Right. Good. Okay. Well done. Um, any comments on the feed now because I'll keep looking at that until 11 so five minutes then I can answer questions anything else email me get these questions done I'll go through them at the start of next lesson on Thursday um yeah happy days bye for uh for now